Hi everyone, this is Holly. We're going to be doing some super fun spring DIYs in this video. And as always, I hope you enjoy the show. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I'd love it if you click that button. So I saw this photograph a while ago on Pinterest and I absolutely loved it. And I thought when I saw this, it was $4.99. I got it for half price at $2.50. I thought I'm going to get this and try to dupe this. So this is a pie tin from the Dollar Tree. I think they call it cake pan, but to me it looks more like a pie tin. I'm just going to take off the sticker, use a little scraper from the Dollar Tree to scrape it off. I'm going to use some Waverly paint in the color ink because the chalk paint does tend to stick better to this pie tin. You can sand it to rough it up a little bit. I wish I did, but I forgot, so I had to seal it extra good at the end. Another trick that you can do, and this is in the event that you don't have the right color in spray paint, because otherwise it's kind of redundant. If you're gonna spray your craft, you might as well just spray it the color that you want it. But let's say you have your favorite color and it's in an acrylic paint and you're worried about it sticking. You can spray your craft or any shiny surface with a clear acrylic spray or a clear varnish, anything clear like that, and your paint will stick to it. You could even use white spray paint in a pinch because that's a good, you know, neutral base for you to paint other colors on, and your paint, even acrylic paint, will stick. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint the bottom of the candle holder now and the sides and the top. I forgot I didn't want to paint the top because I wanted to glue it directly on the surface so you'll see me after I dry everything take a nail file and sand just the edges off where I'm going to put the permanent glue but I didn't do a perfect paint job because a lot of antiquing they add this color blue in there so I wasn't worried if some of it was peeking out I thought that would just make it look even more authentic here I go with the nail file we're just going to get some of this paint off and then we're going to glue the lid on the top I'm gonna use a combination of E6000 and hot glue. So if you watch crafting videos, you've probably seen that trick hundreds of times. You can use any strong adhesive that you want. The reason we mix the two with hot glue is because we wanna keep moving and, and it provides an instant bond. If you're a crafter at home that also loves an instant bond, it's a great little trick. And if not, you can just use a strong adhesive and wait for it to dry. It doesn't have to be E6000. It does smell very strong of fumes, but I have a HEPA filter going in the crafting room and my windows open as well, so make sure you have plenty of ventilation when you use that glue. You also saw me draw a circle on the bottom of that pie tin, and yes, I am sticking with pie tin, but that's just me. You don't have to do that. It just drives me nuts when things are not centered. If you're really good at getting it centered without drawing that circle, you can skip that step. Now I'm gonna use some paint in the color plaster. This is actually folk art paint, and it's more, I think, if you look at the ingredients, it's more designed for furniture and heavier use of chalk paint, so this definitely sticks. Better than Waverly, for sure. It's just a tougher paint because it is made for furniture. It sticks better, it's tougher, and you're just gonna have that added benefit if you use it for crafting. So I'm just using this, as you can see, in a really haphazard, dry brushing manner. The reason I did black first, and I spoke about this in very early videos, so for those of you that you know are watching for the first time, when you have wood, it's never one color. Wood has many colors in it, just like hair does. You see the color brown, but there's actually red in there, gold, so many different colors. And it does look more authentic and more real if you take the time to do black as a base then you do your white and then you go from there staining and you'll see right here you can already see it it just looks more like an antiqued wood I'm making it antique but I have done this on a Halloween video for a plastic tray where I wasn't trying to make it antiqued and you know just do a wood grain and it looked exceptionally good just <laughs> I'm not bragging but it did look really good <laughs> So I will leave that video down in the link if you're interested in seeing that method. But if you want to do faux wood, you definitely want to do it with multiple colors, multiple layers if you want it to look very real. So that's what we have so far. And this is the free printout for you guys today. I love this printout. It's a cute little bunny with an Easter egg. And I'm going to cut it out really slowly around the edges. I am taking off the grass that kind of hangs over the edge because I know that's not going to fit on this Dollar Tree egg. This is a Dollar Tree egg, by the way. They have these in like a chicken, I didn't get the chicken, a carrot egg bunny. I love them. They're super heavy weight and they stand up on their own. 
it is so high-end feeling and looking and there's so many things that you can do with this with crafting so I was so pleased to find these so keep an eye out for them in your local Dollar Tree and I'm just using the good old glue stick trick it's my favorite because it guarantees you're not going to get any wrinkles or creases and you can always seal it with Mod Podge afterwards if you want there's another method of putting Mod Podge on and then ironing and you know I always like to get it done really fast that is a great method absolutely it works you won't get any wrinkles guaranteed but I just like to go really fast and do it the easiest way and the glue stick works perfect I've never had it come off and it's really not about what you glue things down with it's more about what you seal it with that's what holds it down in the end so you can always you know do the glue stick be generous with it lots of heavy layers and then go from there so I'm just adding some Dollar Tree florals now. I added some of the little like palms, I guess. I think those were from Walmart. Then the boxwood was from Amazon. I have those linked down below in my description box. It's a very good deal. And the yellow flowers are from Dollar Tree. And the lavender, I go to Walmart to get that because the price for the amount that you get is pretty much comparable to Dollar Tree and I think the lavender looks so real it's superior and I'm just trimming the bottom here because I want this to stand up on its own I'm using these little tiny flowers that I got from Timu in their crafting section it was a really good deal I think I paid like maybe a dollar for all these little spring flowers and I thought those would come in really handy during the Easter season And now I'm using two of the towering blocks from Dollar Tree just to put it on the back to make sure that it stands up without falling down. I'm just going to check to make sure it does not tip over right there and we are good to go. So these are the furniture pens. You find them over in the automotive section, usually in the Dollar Tree, and I love to distress with them. But here's the thing, these wonderful thick little crafting eggs, bunnies and whatever, they still look like MDF board on the side. So I thought, you know, I'm just gonna scribble the furniture pen on there and stain it and see what happens. And I got a wonderful effect. It actually made it look like a sliced tree trunk, like a wood piece, really, really good. You probably could use a brown marker for it too, but I'm not sure. But just remember that hack, if you, you know, if you find those little eggs and bunnies that are really thick, just remember that little hack because it definitely elevated it. So now I'm using the reindeer moss this is about the only time that I use it is usually during the Easter season because it's so vivid and green, although it's also nice for Christmas for some crafts for sure. And I put it inside my pie tin, put the egg in there, and this is what we ended up with and we're all done. I love this. I was so excited to find this. This is like a little mini cake pan, like riser. It was only $3.50. The original store was Home Goods, and I had just been in there, and they're still, sell well, they're on clearance. Those are still there. So somehow it ended up in the thrift store, and I grabbed it. And now I'm gonna go ahead, well, I thought about it. Do I wanna leave this gold? Do I wanna paint it white? And I thought, no, I definitely like the metal, but it's too bright and shiny for me. I thought I'm gonna antique it. And my little hack for antiquing gold is just taking black chalk paint and smearing it on, just covering all of the gold everywhere basically, where it's shiny and you just keep working with it and you use a Kleenex like a tissue. You don't use a wipe. You actually have to use something dry for this to work. And you just keep smearing it around and around and it gives it a wonderful effect of antiquing. Super easy, super cheap, and the results are beautiful. Next, we have these foam eggs from the Dollar Tree, and I'm just gonna use three of them. This time, I'm not gonna stake them with a skewer. I usually stake my foam eggs because they already have a hole in them, so I figure, why not? But these don't have holes in them, which is why I bought them, because, you know, I just, I wanted some eggs without puncture marks. 
So I'm holding them with my fingers, so please excuse me. It's a little bit messy, but it works. I'm using a light blue paint from Apple Barrel Paint. Any light blue paint will work. I'm going to try and copy some eggs that I saw online. They're like wild bird eggs, and I'm not sure what the species is. I just look for, I just Google blue bird eggs, and a bunch of different photos come up, and I look and I try to copy it the best I can. So while those are drying, I'm taking some of the Spanish moss. This was originally from Dollar Tree, but I put it all in a Ziploc bag because the bags don't close. They don't have Ziplocs on them, so it was getting really messy. And I'm just squishing it together and kind of trying to form a faux bird's nest. This is a really easy way to make a bird's nest, and it looks good. So great hack. And now I'm taking some of the color in Territorial Beige from Apple Barrel Paint, and I'm just gonna take a baby wipe and just kind of smear a little bit here and there because that's what I'm seeing in the photograph. Again, I'm trying to copy the photo that I'm seeing online. And the eggs are not perfect. They have like a dark, kind of brown and gray hues in them, and they look kind of mottled. So after I'm done, this is what we have, and it's pretty close to the photo that I'm looking at but I need some little black speckles. So I just take some paint on, you know, I just dip my brush in a bunch of black paint and I leave it very heavy on the brush on purpose. And then I just use my fingernail and spray it on like that. And we get a nice effect. Next, I'm going to get the wonderful reindeer moss again. It's my to go to for Easter. I love this one or spring. I just think it's perfect. I'm going to put a little bit down first and then I'm going to put my faux bird's nest out of Spanish moss down next and then I'm just going to fill it up with these little blue eggs and the results I think are stunning. This is my kitchen table centerpiece this year and I love it. Let me know what you think. So this particular Goodwill had a bunch of knockoffs from Target and from Ross in it. So I think they have an agreement with the store next to them that they take their stuff when they don't sell. So I think obviously this is probably a Valentine's Day tray that didn't sell, but I thought it was such good quality. It's solid wood and you can turn it upside down and make a wonderful tray out of it. I found these little carrots in my last shopping video. If you didn't check it out, be sure to do that. It has some great finds in there and I got them for crafting, but they're a a little bit brighter than is my taste. Sorry if you can hear my cat in the background again. <laughs> he wants to come in the room. So I'm painting it just a lighter orange. It's just a light orange color that I got from Apple Barrel Paint. And now I'm taking some of these little wood rounds. I'm going to glue these faux moss rabbits on top of it so that they stand up on their own. I found those at the Dollar Tree as well, those little buddies. And the wood rounds, I wanna say I got them at the Dollar Tree, but it may have been Timu. I'm pretty sure it was the Dollar Tree though, and I got a whole bunch of them because I hadn't seen those before. So I stocked up, I got like three bags. And now I'm taking some leftover palm and I'm just cutting the little stems off because the top of these carrots were really janky, silly like straw. It just looks so cheap, so I'm elevating them a little bit by making another faux top and it worked out really good so if you have little palms it's perfect for that kind of thing or anything any little green plant that you have try to remove the straw because it really does make them look way more expensive so now we're using the Spanish moss and we're just putting it in there I'm not trying to make a bird's nest I just want to make it kind of like a filler I just want to use it like a filler and give my little you know I'm making little mini gardens with bunnies in each one of these because I thought that would be so cute so I want my carrots and all my little flowers and things that I put in there to stand up on their own so I'm using the moss for that and I'm just gonna set each one in the middle the bunny and then I'm gonna put two carrots on either side of the bunnies and now we're using some more of those spring flowers which I did get at Team U. they're so fun they actually have like I don't know if you can see in the package there but they have a pretty long yellow mini stem 
so they work more like a pick where you can kind of push them in they're really nice for that because they don't fall out so I found that helpful and then just in the bare areas I'm gonna add some bigger flowers and I also found these way awesome mushrooms at Dollar Tree in my last shop with me video again please check it out there was so many good finds I bought the purple ones they also have like a stiff wire on the end of it which I cut down and they work perfect for like little picks so you can just stick them in you don't even have to glue you can reuse them for a craft next year usually with these little scenes I have to take them apart and put them in a ziplock bag and then store the heart separately and redo it each year because they won't stay packed away but we're all done I think this came up so beautiful it's so cheerful let me know what you think This is also a bunny from Home Goods. It was only $5, but I found it at the thrift store for like three. Again, I don't know what it was doing there because it's not even on clearance at Home Goods. It's a current item that you can buy, but I wasn't complaining. So I just wanted to make it have a little something for Easter, just a little bit more bright and cheerful than just a plain bunny. Although this bunny, honestly, because it's wood, like I live right by a forest my backyard is a forest I could certainly do this up all through spring and even into the summer just by taking the flowers out but anyway I'm using one of those little temporary planters that you can buy at the Dollar Tree I just dry brushed it with some white chalk paint I'm filling it with reindeer moss and now I'm cutting down the Walmart lavender and I'm gonna make like a little pretty lavender planter here because I just I love lavender, especially the Walmart lavender. It's so pretty. I have ordered it from Amazon, bought it from Dollar Tree, ordered it from Teemu. Lots of times it shows up with like a white powder that gets everywhere. So far the most realistic looking one and the one that doesn't give off any residue and it doesn't smell like plastic, it's just really nice, is the Walmart one. And I'm not getting any kind of sponsorship from this. I just really love their lavender. So let me know if you keep this up all year round. But for now, this is what we have for spring and I love it. So I found this white tray. I'm pretty sure this is from the Dollar Tree Plus because they have one just like this. It's like $5. I didn't pay too far off from that. I paid like $3.50, I think. But it's a solid wood tray. It's kind of bright white for me. So as you can see, I'm gonna take some gray paint. It's from Apple Barrel, pewter gray, and just distress it a little bit because I don't want mine to be so white. So I do have another free printable for you. It's so cute. I found it on, I believe it was clip art for vintage bunnies. And the ears are a little short for a bunny, but it's, my husband said, it looks like a magical mythical creature. So all the little guys come out during springtime. So I still love it. And I ended up, you know, printing it out on tissue paper. The method for tissue paper is really easy. You just use some cardstock, some regular tissue paper, like you would wrap a gift with nothing fancy it can even use generic it doesn't have to be hallmark or anything and you tape the edge of you know you cut it out the same size as the cardstock and tape the edge with masking tape or painters tape or a tape that you can easily remove and you just put it through your printer the right side up and the image will print on the tissue paper and then you cut it away from the cardstock and it does a wonderful transfer i love this over a cricut i have a cricut and i never use it because i don't feel like it's fair because you guys are so excluded unless you have a Cricut. So I try to avoid using it so everyone can recreate what I'm making if they want to. Plus you can't get intricate images like this with Cricut. It's just like, well, it's vinyl. It's like the vinyl stickers you get from Dollar Tree and you just stick it on your craft. So I'm not a huge fan. <laughs> this is actually flatter and to me less noticeable. 
because I used the glue stick. You saw what I did and it just goes down perfectly flat, no wrinkles, and then I dry brush around it to make it blend in and it disappears. I've shown it on a Christmas video how much it disappears, it's great. So you saw me take some sandpaper and a nail file just to sand off any extra paint that I didn't want and distress it. Then I'm putting Mod Podge on because I will be using this, but we're all done. Well, that brings us to the end of this video today, you guys. I sure had fun going to the thrift store. It's been a long time, and I hope you guys had fun watching what I did with everything. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. And as always, until the next video, breathe deep, fret not, and do things that make you happy.